Um, yes, it says we are live. I don't yeah, feel so, alive. So uh, Nicole will not be joining us today. Just, you know. She... Okay. Aww. No worries. So, yeah, found us a replacement as soon as he's <laughs> back online. Oh, is he better looking than Nicole? Um, <laughs> it's hard to tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a mask involved. I see. Yeah. Yes. I'll let you do the introductions on him. Um, in the meantime, well, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we technically have five minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Any well, there's nobody watching us, so no need to get started right away. Yep. <laughs> but there are this is the pre-show. But even even the people who don't watch us live and um, listen to us later, they they hear this part. I don't cut it out. So uh, hello, people so listening to us. Anything that would get you into trouble, right? Correct. Yes, correct. Greetings, loser. Hello. <laughs> I'm offended. Yeah. Oh no. Why do you want to talk to Jack that way? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm offended at your offense. Oh, my wife's offended at my offense. Uh, That's how she rolls. <laughs> she rolls. Maybe you're just offensive against me. <laughs> maybe oh, you're just maybe you're just plain offensive. Well, shower <laughs> me. I'm speaking yeah, deluxe think. offensive. So there. You you paid for the premium package, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the gift that keeps on giving. Oh. Whether <laughs> we want it to or not. Like the <laughs> raccoon in your lawn. <laughs> I haven't seen any raccoons in my area. I've seen possums and skunk, but no raccoons. No, oh, they're there. They're just ninjas. <laughs> I've had uh, a coyote, oh. and uh, what what appears to be the the uh, damage left by an armadillo. Oh, no? okay. They like the they like. The... Yeah, I haven't seen Maybe armadillos here either. Oh, we have some people cold. watching. I think we have watching for grubs. <clears throat> no okay, comments. we know who you are. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, Hank, you can join us as soon as he's around. Good. Oh, wait, wait. He looks like he Ready might be looking here. <laughs> okay. Green dot came back. Our, oh. our, our guest. All right, well, like I said, I'll let you do the instructions after I introduce you guys. Okay. <sighs> yeah, just tell me when he's clicking in. So. <laughs> All righty. Well, in case you haven't noticed, you have found a Texas Steampunk connection. Once again, we are coming at you from our various steamships and bunkers throughout Texas. Well, you know, pretty, pretty much the same area, but we don't know that for sure because <laughs> we are not in the same place together. That's why I have this random stuff up behind me. It just stays. I just take it with me and go throw it up at another place. So right. And I like just I'm have this. <laughs> just have the same background at all times. It could be anywhere. That's <laughs> you know. not true, Flavio. You have different backgrounds many times. This is true yes. because I have traveled throughout Texas. <laughs> the rest of I, are too afraid to. Yeah. <laughs> I am, of course, Flavio, also known as uh, Dammit Flavio. Every once in a while, or actually just once, Major Dammit Flavio. <laughs> With me, as always, is, of course, Sax, the gentleman adventurer. And no. um, mostly with us at all times is uh, Jack Steam Chest. Oh, I might be here name, Jack from Steam Chest. <laughs> and. Hello. The Nicole it couldn't join I. us today, yes. but that's okay. I have um, my good lady wife with us. Uh, well, hello, hello, good lady wife. Hi, good lady <laughs> wife. <laughs> Are you ah. also a gentleman adventurer? Uh, sometimes I adventure sometimes. for gentlemen. She is a, oh. <laughs> adventure for gentlemen. Not lately. Not lately. Been stuck at home. <laughs> Damn the plague. Damn the plague. However, I believe um, I've gotten my first shot, and I'll be getting my second shot in a couple of weeks. Congratulations. I'll be, I'll be Two vaccinated. shots for free. <laughs> that won't help me with the plague unless it uh, you know, ends well, everything. Just, that, that's what our <laughs> necro professor will be for as soon as he gets on. Yes, speaking of plague, <laughs> I think we have, an, we have an expert coming on, apparently. <laughs> I have an expert in plagues. I'm very excited i i think uh <laughs> two weeks ago we talked about uh vaccinations and i was getting those 
uh, text messages that said I had appointments that I never oh, set yeah. up. Um, now I finally do have, I think I have an appointment to get a shot tomorrow. Oh, so, cool, cool, cool. Um, unless it's so, another scam or something <laughs> oddball. Uh, was it an appointment you set up for yourself or had set up yes, for I you? I actually or? went to a okay. website and filled out a form. <laughs> and as a result, I got an email. Um, and the reason I, I questioned it at all is because it was so easy. <laughs> and it, after, you know, day and night uh, hitting the Internet, looking for some way to get this thing, that this should just go through so quickly and easily. There's got to be something wrong. <laughs> well, I, you'll, you'll find out when you get there, I guess. There's um, a cat. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I didn't. I wasn't able to do it myself. My, well, my now girlfriend, uh, she has connections, and <gasps> through her school, well, she she's a teacher, and uh, basically the parents of the children had set up a network where they were hitting the internet and hitting all the websites and and at the right times to get the to get the to get the appointments and everything, and they managed to get me one. And I'm good to go because I mean, wow. is it, you, have, you have to hit like at midnight or at 1 a.m. You have to hit at weird times yeah. to get the right. openings and stuff, you know. <laughs> and yeah, but they had, a, they had a whole got, network. After I got my 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 emailed scheduled appointment, I finally got a notice from uh, Austin Public Health that oh, I qualify, and now mm -hmm. I can now I can put uh, ask for a, an appointment, mm -hmm. but the appointments. Aren't going to be posted until 6 p.m. Yeah, which is the minute I get off of work. <laughs> right. So, uh, no time. I went. I went at 6 p.m. I said, "Okay, you're on. You're on the list. Now wait like at least an hour to get to the front of the line." I'm like an hour? <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I got to wait with all these I'm disease just, vectors. Disgusted with uh, how Austin has um, managed this whole vaccine thing yeah everybody i know who has gotten a vaccine has had to drive out of town or i, I am or technically going to huddle sort of, have <laughs> some sort of special uh hook up or yeah. game the system to get it it's that's what I, that's kind of what i did and i am technically going to huddle which actually isn't that far from me it's just right down the road yeah it, it's still huddle i mean yeah, yeah. i'm going to it's leander Oh, Leander, it's even That's better. in the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's crazy how how many hoops you have to jump through. Because I did the same thing. I went to the same public health you know, screen and I filled out forms and I went, okay, I tried to get an appointment. No appointments available. You know, it's like, well, well crap. Now what? You know, and I love it when it says, yes, there's an appointment available. Good, take it. Sorry, no, not anymore. Right. Someone got it. Yeah. Just... It was right there. It was right there. I clicked the button. I was in the basket. But someone clicked the button a second before you did, kind of thing. It did. And uh, I wish them the best. Uh, but yeah, so that was that, that's our, our our plague adventures as we're waiting for our guest. However, we might as well go ahead and do uh, our podcast within a podcast, uh, drinking with friends. Good. Uh, I, however, <laughs> well, mine. I have a story behind mine. I went. I left earlier today. I went. I left about four thirty to run some errands. And my last errand was going to be at HEB to get dinner and a beer, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, at my first stop, uh, my car died. <laughs> so I wound up having to deal with that. And um, and it, it, it wouldn't start. So I thought maybe I just needed to jump. So I called my roommate and he went and he gave he got the, we got the jumper cables and hooked them up and everything. And nope, no, nope, wouldn't start, wouldn't start. Luckily, there was a Firestone right there within walking distance. But so I went over there, talked to them, and they, they they brought out their big jumper thing that they have and took it over there. And the guy goes, All right, start it up. And I started it up. Try to. No. Goes, Wait, your air conditioner's on. Turn your air conditioner off. Turn the air conditioner off. And there's smoke coming out from under my car. But um, started the car. The car started after the air conditioner turned off. Apparently, the, 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 the compressor for the air conditioner has seized up. And that's caused all kinds of problems as well. But the car started. So I figured, okay, I'm good. So I sent I sent my roommate back home. And I'm about to go drive. I was going to go to HEB. And then, okay, I started backing up. And then the wheel just wouldn't really turn. <laughs> there was some kind of issue with the steering. Oh, and so apparently there's some kind of connection between the compressor and some belts and this and that. And so I couldn't steer. So I managed to drift it over to the Firestone and just left it there. And they, 
<laughs> left it there for diagnosis tomorrow. And so, so I had to call up, call up my roommate, say, oh, come back and get me. <laughs> so, and so by the time I got home, it was too late to go to HEB. So I did not get a beer uh, oh. or dinner for that matter. A chance um, for that beer you dislike still left around? Nope, that's gone. Oh. Uh, so I'm just stuck, I'm just stuck drinking my diet, Doctor B. You know, so <sighs> unfortunately, so no beer because it was because of car troubles. Um, I tried, I really tried, uh, but it, it just didn't happen. Oh, it was in, it, that terrible. was my plan. Darren, stop here, stop here, stop at HEB, get the beer, get the food, and come home and get ready. But nope, <laughs> the car just took up all the time. The car said, "Not today." So that's, that sucks. Yes, that it sorry. does. I'm not looking forward to the bill for the repair of my car. Um, <laughs> someone's screaming in the background somewhere. Yeah, that's me over here. <laughs> okay. Um, At least you got that government stimulus, right? Yes, I did. Um, which was weird because the first time it actually got direct deposited to my account. This time I actually got a check in the mail. <laughs> oh, so strange. that was odd. Yeah. Same here. Yes. Uh, mine still got direct deposited to my uh, to, to my, one of my accounts. Yeah, huh, that's weird. Yeah, the first time I got direct deposit, and then the Latin, the two cents, uh, they both came as checks, and they both came late. Yeah, uh, the last one came two weeks ago. Yeah, that's about when mine came, two weeks ago. Or so yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's not a bad. I mean, I would rather not spend it on car repair, but you know, I'm like whatever. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my car, I mean, I knew the air conditioning wasn't working in my car anyway. It wasn't blowing cold. So, I, you know, I just thought it was free on issue, but apparently it was the compressor. <laughs> Yikes. So, wow. That's, yeah. That's, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my story for today <laughs> and why I don't have a beer. <laughs> so that's why I beer. let's move on. Uh, facts. What are you drinking? Okay. Well, I don't have a story as good as yours, but I'm, kind of glad for that <laughs> it's a terrible story i went to the heb to the you know the single beer aisle mm -hmm. and sometimes you just like grab one because of the because of the label because of the yep. picture on the can and so this time no. yes. i got Cans. carl no. oh carl carl carl, oh, carl. carl. okay yeah. I, I, carl. Don't know what that is. I gotta get carl <laughs> It's from uh, the Carl. Green Elbow Brewery, which is uh, in the beautiful South Austin, oh. uh, within walking distance of the famous St. Elmo Motel, oh. which you would uh, buy by the hour. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> is this a beer you buy by the hour? No, the the motel. Oh, the motel for the beer that you can buy by the hour. The, for the beer, right. right. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And this is a Kolsch-style beer. Um, I've been to the St. Elmo, uh, not the St. Elmo Hotel. I've been to the St. Elmo Brewery, um, and I found it to be really good. It, it's probably my favorite brewery in town. Really? Uh, okay. Hmm. That's still open. Because <laughs> I don't think I've ever been there. Um, there's a whiskey distillery like two doors down from it, which I have not yet gone <laughs> to. Nice. Um, Okay, it's it's uh, fairly goals. fairly light, filtered, fuzzy. Exactly. Smells good. Right. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Um, very clean, full flavored, cold style beer. It's perfect. Yeah. It's <laughs> okay. This is it's a good Carl the beer. Carl. Carl. Take Carl. 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 Carl was the name of a of a one of the in the first season of Walking Dead. He was a kid, and his father would always yell his name, Carl. <laughs> I mean, if so. if Carl was actually what he was saying, I still think the kid's name is Coral. Coral. <laughs> Coral. Well, you know, he I was a British. Carl is an animated llama that liked to uh, kill people. Okay, I Carl. Know this llama, <laughs> Carl. Carl, that kills people. <laughs> okay, that's. Hmm. Don't think I know this one. Oh, I love the internet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> okay, Jack, what are you drinking? Oh, uh, I am. 
I'm enjoying me, my uh, my summer beer. Uh, oh, I almost I almost hate to have to tell people I drink this because everyone gives me the same look when I tell them, and it's just this. Ew, you drink that? Like, we don't judge yes. here, probably. I will. I'll judge you. I'm a beer snob. <laughs> right, here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm a beer snob. What is that? What is that? Bud Light. Oh my God. We're, we're judging you. <laughs> oh my no, God. No, 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 no. It's not just Bud Light because Bud, Bud Light is one Light. thing. Oh, this is Bud Light with lime. Oh, that's it. I'm kicking Bud you off. Bud Light lime. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, <laughs> kidding. You're back. You're back. <laughs> so. Don't even put a real lime in it. You've got to have it. Actually, I do lime. normally, but this stuff just tastes right. It it tastes like it already has a lime in it. Unlike the Michelob cactus margarita, whatever. Or yeah, I know, right? That it's exactly as it sounds. It sounds prickly, and it just it's, it's not even sour. Like if it was okay, sour, okay, one, Jack. Okay, okay. I, I've had enough of your beer. Uh, your 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 guest is about is on waiting in the background. You want to introduce him? Yes. So. We have had this man on uh, Ste in Steam Chest many times, and uh, I'll show you some of the things that we still have that he has uh, made for us. He's also a cartoonist for um, which we will probably get to watch him draw some stuff live this evening. Ooh. His name is the Necrofessor. Well, He's wait, where'd he go? There he is. <laughs> hey. Add to stream. Hello, there he is. Hello, hello. Can you, hear me? Can you see me? My we can. Can. All right. Awesome. You're coming in strong. Fantastic. Well, um, I'm not going to drink anything alcoholic, but I did decide that I was going to drink something really strong. This stuff is called Biota Golden Beet Juice Blend. And oh. it is, uh, it's got weird floaties in the bottom of it. And um, <laughs> so I stuck a little bit in this goblet. And uh, have you ever right. tasted what a beet tastes like? Uh, yes. No. Oh, yes. I'm so. Uh... It tastes like dirt. It does. It tastes... Dirt and sugar. <laughs> okay, sugar dirt. Like I said, no wor no worries though. I'm not drinking anything alcoholic today. There was a whole story behind it. So, <laughs> God, Ugh. yeah, it's like you. <laughs> you can really taste the dirt. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> hey, that's what you Ugh. pay for. Is that quality dirt flavor? Ugh. Oh well, ne Jack, Necro Professor, you are getting some fangirl like squeezing. Professor, and drink something with some body. <laughs> and yeah. dirt. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like just pour this out over here and just, just go get me some beet juice. Maybe like beet juice or something. That's, that's wow. You're on another level, sir. Another level. <laughs> he he usually <laughs> is on another level. Oh, I want to. Uh, can I do a little bit of show and tell? Sure. Go right ahead. Well, wait. That that is that is the drinking with friends um, podcast within the podcast. Okay, we're moving on. Okay. <laughs> Show and tell. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Um, so, yes, everybody. Right. Now, remember, this is also going to be a voice podcast for later on. They're not always going to be – people aren't going to be watching us live. They've been listening to us uh, video audio only. So, describe what you're showing us. Yeah. Oh, very well. well. Wait, okay. Let's first start and describe the Necrofessor here. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Yes. He's not a guy in a hat or anything. This is, <laughs> <laughs> he has a style. It, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to verbally explain the necrofessor. He's know. a plague doctor. He's a plague doctor. Okay, <laughs> but that—that's such a okay. He's not a, a plague doctor. He's the plague doctor. Well, he's okay. He's oh, our plague doctor. Comes from I guess. the nightmare <laughs> lands. I mean, so the sweet. worst of the Wait. worst. The Alice of Wonderland. If it was nuked to oh. oblivion. Well, I'm I'm happy to know that our podcast reaches the nightmare lands. I'm, I didn't know that. I, I found the nexus that reaches everywhere. That's good. Um, I, <laughs> I pipe it through my my toilet. Oh, okay, oh. okay. As long as it gets there, it's, it's, I hear it's, they all, have it's the all great. G. The five Most G assuredly, there. yeah. In the deepest, dankest recesses of the multiverse, there are many <laughs> tales about this very podcast, and I'm thrilled to be on here now. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'll stop flushing my latrine now. At this point. <laughs> well, uh, for a brief introduction of uh, what my uh, character personage is. Uh, I am the Necrofessor. I'm an interdimensional plague doctor, and I'm here to prove that steampunk just does not just exist in the Victorian age. It actually exists in all time frames. And I think that we are all just uh, interdimensional rift hoppers, like just traveling a bunch of sophisticated weirdos. And every once in a while, we all bump into each other from now and then in time to time. You get what I'm saying? So back in my day... <laughs> The world was, uh, well, 
Hmm, y'all know what a pandemic is, right? Well, uh, that's kind of what so. <laughs> we, we've gotten a good, 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 good shakedown these days. Yes, yeah, well, uh, same kind of jam happened way back in the day, and I'd like to say that we have, um, as the humanoid conjectural race has come together, I'd like to say that we've kind of learned from our mistakes, but uh, <laughs> you'd be surprised. So, no, uh, no. that being <laughs> no, said... No, no surprises here. <laughs> Regardless, I make my way through the multiverse uh, trying to cure the plague, whatever that may be, in any given moment, and um, trying to document my works along the way. And I fall into to, uh, the strange fellows known as steampunks, because they only seem to, to fit the je ne sais quoi, the, 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 the ability to embrace romanticized notions as well as engineering and history and uh, alternate energy sources and being able to combine all that into a into a look and a lifestyle it's just i'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of it and uh occasionally expelled from it <laughs> <laughs> but we're well, thrilled to have parts in it too I, I thought you were gonna say we're gonna we embrace the plagues. Like, um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, not... embrace the plague. Make it. We need to make a better plague. This one's too lame. It's not cool enough well, yet. It, well, I've heard it has mutated a couple times at least. So you know, it's working yeah. on it. We're working on it. It's yep, somebody's pressing the mutate button on the 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 actual plague ink game, the one that's really going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, apparently you have a fan. You have a Suko Saki is a fangirl squeeze screen. Um, screaming, um, and she, you can use your leeches on her on him any any time, any day. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, <God. laughs> anyway, uh, Hello, that's amazing. I, made it. I know Suko. Uh, well, I tangentially on in in the interwebs, but that's awesome to hear a familiar uh, avatar name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. Uh, thing about my, living in girl. the steampunk world is that you have to get used to knowing two different names. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, yep, oh, yep. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a story. Only, only two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've known Thax under many names. Um, mostly Thax, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's it, I mean, for the most part, uh, we refer to each other by our muggle names, but. Um, you'd be surprised how people just only know each other through their uh, steampunk names, if you call it that. Yes, yeah. uh, pseudonyms and uh, doing business as and what have you. <laughs> I literally had to write some work for one of my friends lately. He had to call my actual office. and um, Oh, that's he, awkward. He got a hold of my boss and he's like, hey, is Jack there? And I heard <laughs> the phone call and he's like, Jack? I'm like, oh, that's for me. Nice. <laughs> I had to explain. And then it was really kind of funny. Bye. <clears throat> what was that? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. That was my ventilator off. system kicking off. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm decked out up here. That's cool. My apologies. Vader <laughs> <in there. laughs> sorry. Every once in a while, I go, Woo! don't we all do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> How we down? I try to keep Not... it to, you know, to myself. <laughs> yes. um, only, yeah. only in bed with no one else around a little treat for the audio listeners out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what are we here for oh yeah I was going to do show and tell but since uh, it's going to have to be kind of listen and tell isn't it sure uh, go ahead <laughs> well I'm going to do my best to explain myself um, so lately I've been trying to get into kind of like ghetto uh, animatronics because I'm not the smartest crayon in the light bulb shed, but I like to fiddle around with electronics every once in a while and try and up my cosplay game. And uh, so a friend of mine turned me on to the concept of servo testers. You know what a servo tester is? It's a little thingy. It's like a knob. And I'm going to show it to the Oh, yes. You. <laughs> Here's thingies. So the uh, cool thing about this is that if you have a servo, I have one right here. This is a Metal Gear servo. Metal Gear. Ooh. The Patriots. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, except no substitute steampunks. Like, you usually want Metal Gears in your servos. You don't want plastic gears. Unless you're going for, like, itty bitty tiny scale. And then, in which case, you probably use, like, plastics. Anyway. See, the trick <clears throat> is the plastic gears are super cheap. And so you want to buy them first, but you don't really. Yeah, use them and <laughs> break them. Super cheap stuff. You can oh, use yeah. them as a test for testing, concept testing, or something. You know, 
Yeah, kind of get thing. an idea for it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for this arts and crafts project, you are going to need a battery pack. Uh, it's got to be at least um, 10,000 milliamps, basically oh. enough for it to spit out five volts, right? So you get okay. a battery pack. You're going to want a servo tester. It looks like a little tiny blue box with a nipple knob thingy on it. You could probably find it online. For like we don't five talk bucks. about the nip knobs here. <laughs> nip knobs. <laughs> um, and uh, to uh, attach your battery pack to your servo tester, I have a USB cord, which I scavenged from something, who knows. Uh, cut it off the leads and then cut off the two extra wires, which is only left with the uh, power and the ground. Wire that bad boy up to your servo tester and attach your servo tester to your servo. And to without, test any, <laughs> without any coding knowledge, you plug it in. And does it work? I don't know. It makes little twisty sounds. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 It's working. It's working. And there you go. So that's how you make a bomb. Yes. Just uh, for visual purposes. Oh, wait. What yeah. was that? <laughs> uh, the small the skull. Of dropping a skull. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. But how cool is that? With such simple mechanical thingies, you can now actually uh, make your way into creating some really awesome contraptions. I'm looking forward to taking advantage of this stuff soon. <laughs> that, that is like really cool. I, I've never heard of a servo tester. But I have like used an Arduino to drive a servo. Yeah. And it's not exactly simple. It's a little complicated. So your way is much better. Much <laughs> easier. If all you want to do is move that thing around. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it has three different settings. It has one where you can twist the knob and it moves accordingly. It has one where it does a sweeping motion where it goes all the way back 180 degrees back and forth. And then it has one where it uh, it, it explodes. It's the self-destruct button. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I need that one. <laughs> Everyone needs that one. You never all the, know yeah, all, you need. All your robots, if you're going to build an automaton, build a self-destruct button inside of it. Just, just that's usually a good sake. idea. I think so too. You know, I mean, but not very good for like a secret base. Why is there always like the don't hit the don't button kind of thing that blows everything up? I mean, come on. Because they leave uh, it up too obvious. It's too obvious. <laughs> we, it's, we've had, I have, I have now a sign in my thing that says, you know, we've gone so many days without pushing the fake button because the real button was pushed once and I've had now had to make a fake button. <laughs> It looks so cool. Look, I've gone through plenty of evil henchmen laboratories in my day just because the look of the giant self-destruct button and its glossy finish, it's just so tantalizing. I can't help it. I do it every time. <laughs> I've just gone through a lot of laundromats. I'm done with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like, okay, I'm, do I'm done with you guys. I'm out of here. Hit, hit the button. I'm, just gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of you henchmen. <laughs> Free vacation, bam. <laughs> I'm not gonna pay your vacation hours. Click. <laughs> Let's go find me some new henchmen. Be cheaper. Mm, wow. Henchmen. Well, so what what makes a good henchman? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, undying loyalty, never asking many questions, able to think for themselves, but not enough to want to take over. And uh, uh, minimum wage. I or mean, you want a lieutenant that gets paid a little above that can lord it over the ones that are getting paid minimal wage. <laughs> Money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to do it, I guess. <laughs> you want to be a henchman? Wait, wait pay you pay it. your henchman? <laughs> I, thought they, you're they... to, like, I thought you're supposed to like offer them a, a, a part of the take and then just don't give it and to then, them later when you hit no, the, that, the, the short are, button. That's, that's when you're getting people in on the ground floor and oh, want, to okay. be, want to be Speaking splitting it. You pay them in stock options. Yes, that's, that's good. It. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta let you in on on the new thing. It's the undead servants. They're they're amazing. They're easily expendable. Um, they're flammable, and they don't care. Um, huh? They okay. they work for practically nothing except human flesh. Um, How well do they follow instructions? Not at all. Uh, hardly ever. I mean, it's oh, okay. basically a riot every second. But <laughs> so, you have a so lot of the them. cattle doors and let the chaos happen. I see. Yeah, yeah. I, if that's what your goal is, then I guess they're perfect for it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, it, I need as many bodies to pile into this furnace as uh, possible, please. And yeah, I could probably do that. Or, well, that's how you run your steam engines, right? 
<laughs> burn yeah. the bodies. Um, yeah. bodies. <laughs> we don't get very far very fast, but you know, we do it in style. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> your, your, your weight to thrust ratio is nuts. Oh, the smells. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, see me hovering over one of those local orphanages. Like I'm working out a deal. Don't worry, we got we got plans. <laughs> we'll take care of everyone. Yeah, really, don't worry. Honestly. Yeah. So, so, uh, Michael <laughs> Professor, are you? Are, do you? Well, before the before the current plague and they shut everything down, were you were you going to conventions and such in in costume or oh, where yes. were people? Where would people see you? Would have seen you. <laughs> Oh, uh, you probably would have caught me around at the uh, southern end of the U.S. of A. Uh, during some, like, uh, t uh, Texas El Paso conventions and such as some, like, New Mexico and then Arizona conventions as well. No, just okay. those are my usual stomping grounds. Um, and uh, I have ascended to the ranks of plague priest as of this last year because oh, I was well, able to okay. officiate a wedding at uh, the Wild Wild West Con out there in Tucson. Well, congratulations oh. on your ascension. <laughs> you get the hat and everything. I saw a picture. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Like pictures. Special creepy. Uh, also, there was a steampunk pope out there. So I had to make kind of amends with the pope hat thing. And he was like, oh, don't worry. Mine's bigger. And I'm like, okay. You <laughs> he with the biggest hat. <laughs> yes, yes. I give it to him. I give it to him. He does, he does the, the steampunk pope thing full time. I just, oh. uh, just speak on the good word every once in a while. If you catch my drift. <laughs> How about the bad word? I know, I know you have two books. <laughs> I'm comparing Bibles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How many chapters does yours have? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> mm. This is get the freshest, dankest gospels. Yeah. I haven't I haven't finished writing the tenth level of it yet. Well, technically, okay. You could you could anybody here could be a uh, a saint. You just have to, they even chopped it down. You don't have to even perform two miracles. You just have to perform one miracle. That is, then we could, you could be a saint. How does that sound? Oh. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll, I'll work on it. One, but, you know. one miracle? That'll sway some card games. Yeah. <laughs> that seems almost simple. I mean, I, I may have already performed one without even realizing it. I'll have to go back in my memories. <laughs> <laughs> There'll have to be enough people to, re to remember it to want to write about you and make you oh, okay. be okay. sainted. After, well, I guess now the undead bit becomes brings this whole thing into another light. If you become sainted before you're dead, or you know, you have to be dead to be a saint, right? Do you? Uh, okay, how about to be a, to be a living saint? Um, I've, I've never sure, heard of a living saint. Sure, not, we're I'm winging not, it at this point. We don't. Okay. I think we're speaking <laughs> on behalf of the, the answer now. to this question. How about an I, I I saint? Which one of you has the Pope on speed dial? <laughs> you can be sainted as 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 a living person, or you could at one time. Uh, okay. If you look at um, at religious art of the the medieval period, you will see uh, people with with halos, and then you will see ones with square halos. The square halo indicates that that person, that saint, was alive at the time that 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 painting was made. Hello, oh. Rez. Wow. Okay. Now we know. The more you know. <laughs> Square halo. Why do I even remember that? I have no idea. That's a weird flex. Oh, oh, you got one of those round halos. Oh, <laughs> right, I see. You, I see you don't have one of these. You didn't make uh, it. Oh, you're still alive with your with, with your round halo. Ew. <laughs> Get away from me, peasant. What are you gonna do? Use it as a frisbee. Go to that other <laughs> cloud. Don't like you no more. <laughs> you got to go to the, the square seventh, halos. Seventh cloud. You can't come up here on the eighth cloud. <laughs> This is the party cloud. Okay. Well, also <laughs> think about this. What really constitutes a miracle? Like we got a good henchman. We got. I think we figured out what good henchmen are. So now mm. we got to figure out how to attain sainthood. That way we got the uh, the religious tax breaks on our side. Yes. That's uh, what well, I want to what know. Exactly. What size donation constitutes a miracle? Yeah, that's true. I only speak one language. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I speak money. So I could probably tell you a lot. Give it over. I'll, I'll make it. I'll make your American miracle happen. <laughs> I, I, I can. I can make you a halo. I, I, I got a shop in the back. I can make you a halo. <laughs> I mean, you, you, some spray paint in the background. We're done. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> okay, so in the steampunk in, in the steampunky verse, uh, an, a, a, a a real straight up miracle would be to uh, discover an alternate energy source mm-hmm. and be the first one to cash in on it. Be the be the Thomas Edison of your time, I guess. You know that that oh. could get you sainthood. So, especially you, if you stole you'd it. From- two, you'd made two statements: discover and cash in. I dare it, say that Thomas Edison certainly was a casher inner. Yes. Or the discoverer. Yes. Not that it's I'm biased definitely. or anything. But here's the thing. So, like that was that was the question. Is like if you can get the one to cash in on it, you don't have to be the one that invented it. You just have to be no. like wait and yeah, I didn't say be the Nikola Tesla. I, I yeah, said be no. the, the Thomas Edison. <laughs> you can co-op a, a miracle, I say. <laughs> co-op miracles. <laughs> So it doesn't belong to you. Super direct current. <laughs> so you got you got to cover the light bulb. He just uh, you got to patent it before, patent before it anybody else does. Out how to sell it. <laughs> That's the spirit. This, this seems to be a service that I need to be providing. I'm making. I'm taking notes. Mm, patented <laughs> miracles. Mm. Patented <laughs> miracles. That's uh, <laughs> cash in on that. Okay, so we have attained sainthood. Um, what would we do with our lording power? I guess we would have to attain a following, right? What would be the best kind of following? You don't want like over the top religious zealots. You really want to uh, influence the, the 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 course of reality. Maybe if you're trying to mine all the resources out of the planet just for funsies, or if you're just trying to contact some elder demon who just won't return your goddamn calls. But you know, it just oh, might be okay. <laughs> uh, um, what, what, I, what is I, your I, motive operandi in your newly established empire of godly sainthood things? I would go with the Illuminati. It seems fairly, fairly quiet, down, down low, fairly, fairly well invested, and uh, yeah, people like power, so it works. Meaning the shadow well. government? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I was gonna make fun of that, but that's probably half of the point. Is that it's not even taken seriously, so they're able to operate under the. The umbrella of that. Ooh, you, you think know? it's the Illuminati? Let me, let me get yeah. the guy with the funny tall hair to talk about. I'm wearing two stuff. two aluminum foil hats this time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to piss off the you don't want to piss off the Freemasons, though. You know, so you gotta, you, you gotta you know. so you gotta hey, either keep them in mind. Them or quieter than them. Yeah. <laughs> or you I let everybody them. out there listening that is a Freemason. I am your best friend. Let me read all your books. <laughs> Get a, hey, let me in. I want to join. Show me the handshakes. I'll wear the rings. Give him a hood. He wants a hood. I want to join. It, it, look, I have a t-shirt cannon. I will make this work. <laughs> I love it. I mean, who knows? Who knows what's out there? What esoteric occult knowledge, which will help you acquire um, unlimited cosmic power. But, um, hmm. I, th- I think uh, Suki is uh, quoting Hamilton, uh, or the, from the from the show Hamilton. <laughs> you will never be in the room where it happens. <laughs> How does the sausage get made? You just assume that it happens because no one else is in the room where it happens. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Hmm. Sausages, sausages, sausages. I'm barely even happy I'm not in the room. <laughs> is I like that true? Sausages happen in a room with no one in it. Like well, you just assume room sausage just comes out. It's well, just a sausage room. It's, it's fairy magic. Geysers <laughs> <laughs> out of the floor. So is that a miracle then? If sausage just gets made out of a room, is that a miracle? Without anyone, without anyone <laughs> knowing or like being in the room. So yeah, I guess that would be a miracle. Oh yes, I I, I keep my sausage making facility right next to my orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> just like the floors open up, trap doors, kids drop and, in, they get. And they guess, well, coincidentally, coincidentally, you have the highest adoption rate out there. <laughs> yeah, children. they just that uh, it's just keeps. I don't know what I don't know who's adopting Excellent them, but paperwork. Excellent paperwork. Clearly, <laughs> yeah. Between miracles and supernatural horrors, there is a fine, fine line. <laughs> and that's where. The well, no one ever said a miracle out. had to be a happy, happy thing, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, you you could you could open up a pawn shop that sells reliquary and antiques, but you could also sell those same reliquaries and antiques infused with the souls of 127 uh, orphan Victorian age children. 
You can get a better, yeah, get more money out of it. I was gonna, I had a point, but I just buried the lead. Just, <laughs> just, just, just lost. It's like, uh, let me, let me, let me give you a shovel. Uh, sorry, I'm driven mad with power. I, I bought a panda suit the other day, and I, I told myself no one should ever wield such power, but. <laughs> well, what you do in your kitchen with your panda suit is between you and the. Pa oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why I threw the kitchen in there. I just. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, just oh, the kitchen in there. Have you ever experienced what it's like to snuff out the last known species? <laughs> oh, the thrill. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I I, don't, yes. I I think this this whole I don't even know where this conversation is going or where it came from or where it's going where it went. Uh, we were definitely off the rails, but that's okay uh, because I I didn't have any plans. Off the rails, off the rails. I mean, Whee! we do usually have a uh, homework where we try to introduce at least one new steampunk thing that we found um, to introduce that people. Um, do you wish to still do that, guys, or do you want to just continue both BSing with Mister uh, Necro oh. Professor here? <laughs> I, I do. I do want to uh, bring up the thing I saw this week. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Let's do that. Uh, this week, just just days ago, I think, um, Netflix came out with the first season of The Irregulars. Yes. Yes. Mm. And everybody's very mm. excited about it. So uh, the wifey and I sat down and watched it. Hello, wifey. Oh, hello. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Wanted to uh, wanted to give a little bit of a report. Yes, go for it. Yes, I, I watched. Um, I, it's eight. It's eight episodes. I've only seen six, but don't don't worry about don't worry about spoilers. I, okay, I don't, worry. I don't. I don't plan on on spoiling the last two episodes. Um, I, I I will let you discover it. Uh, but but I will talk about yeah the premise of the irregulars. Mm -hmm. Um, it is a. You might call it like a spin-off of a Sherlock Holmes stories, right? Um, yeah. I, I guess it, there was a series of books uh, called um, The Baker Street Irregulars. Uh, Baker Street Irregulars. That's like young adult. Oh, it is definitely a young adult show. Um, but it's it it's I I get it basically it's based very loosely on the Baker Street Irregulars, which was, in fact, written by... Uh, that's not it. Uh, written by the same folks, same guy who wrote Sherlock Holmes. Um, what's his noodle? Anyway. Sir Arthur Cornendale? Oh, Sir Arthur. Yeah, yeah. I, I pulled it up noodle? at work. Yeah. And I didn't thumb, thumbnail it or uh, what have you. But, yes. So it's a, it's a young adult... TV series set in Victorian England, sort of, um, and it's a spinoff of a Sherlock Holmes series, sort of. Um, if you imagine, if you if you know much of Sherlock Holmes, uh, in his later years, he gets uh, addicted to cocaine and heroin, and he's uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a wreck of his former self. So that's about the time period. That this is supposed to happen. However, it's different from the original, you know, Sherlock Holmes universe because uh, there's a lot of uh, supernatural elements that these irregulars, these these children, these these young people. Teens. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're at least late teens, maybe. There's like five or six of them. Mm -hmm. uh, that they are they are employed by. Um, Watson. Dr. Watson to investigate because Watson can't get in uh, to places that these kids can because they're uh, they're just street urchins. Oh, class. Um, and so yeah, every episode they're they're following the a, a, a mystery or trying to solve. Uh, a, a crime that's been done through supernatural means, and uh, they want to to stop it or discover new new information to track down why these things are happening, um, what have you. And as the season continues, as we move forward, uh, we're, we're to understand that London becomes more and more dangerous as more and more monsters and supernatural entities are able to leak into the universe. 
Shakespeare in, <laughs> into the world of London. <laughs> London being the universe. Uh, <laughs> and, and murdering people and causing havoc. Uh, yep. So that's that's the concept. And I wanted to watch it to see if it was, in fact, steampunk. Um, there are no... I did not see any uh, weird gadgets or, or uh, you know, science fiction-y things. So uh, f if we look at the, the three items we, we look for in, in steampunk, it, it fails on that, that one. But it is um, sort of, it's Victorian. Hello, cat. <laughs> and, and it is very anti-establishment because they're they're low class and they're uh, sort of punching up uh, against the the upper class and class society of the Victorian period is heavily uh, heavily talked about. That's a big motivator for the show. So I'd call it steampunk as it hits what? two out of three. I think the, the supernatural element kind of and supernatural element the, is certainly fun, but uh, I think having supernatural elements kind of pushes the torch of steampunk. I think as well, um, even if not sciencey gadgets, just something crazy or you know, like Weird West. I look for supernatural elements in the Weird West, essentially. Which okay, well, I'm not. Uh, as I said, I, I think it's it's steampunk enough. Mm -hmm. I um, agree. Yeah, uh, definitely. So, during a um, little weird caveat too is that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, he was a staunch spiritualist, and um, he had uh, lost his son Kingsley in the Great War, as well. And there, and so like Conan Doyle's influence with spiritualism definitely bled into his literary works. I would say. Mm, yeah, that oh. makes sense. I honestly have not read any Arthur Conan Doyle directly. Well, always uh, you know, watch the shows based on, or you know, books and comics based on uh, Sherlock Holmes, but never, never got to the source. So may you're I better at just not. books on tape because I'll admit that Old English is easier to understand when hearing it versus reading it. It really oh. kind of it takes a bit of brain power more than you'd expect to read Sherlock Holmes. Like I got three of the novel, I got the big like volume novels mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, like the 40s that my dad has and uh like one day i'm gonna read Sherlock home so i start opening I'm like about 30 pages in like my brain hurts just trying to like <laughs> reorganize the words <laughs> of modern english and it's 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 not terrible it just takes a lot of getting used to but if you play it if you just play it it's easier to listen to and understand hmm. i uh, i take a lot of fiber so i'm not a regular oh ah. I had to make the oh. joke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then you might enjoy this one because I've uh, because that one released on Netflix, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, HBO Max just released The Nevers, which is the slick steampunk X Men in corsets. Yes, and I think that's not due till next week. I think. Yeah, April eleventh. Is yeah. that the one with Eva Green? Yes. Oh, goddamn! Yeah. Need HBO. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And I, I just found a little blurb on it that kind of like really sums up. Apparently it sums it up a bit from the perspectives of people who've seen it already or at least seen enough of it to write something about it, which tells me a little bit about like, ah, they probably like watch like the, the pilot or something, but which I don't like to basically judge a, a series on its pilot because pilots are so different sometimes, even if they mm -hmm. become the first episode of it, which is usually double the you know, length and whatever it's not always the best. It's just trying Correct. to show as much as possible in the world or like, like the Harry Dresden pilot for the Harry Dresden series was more like the actual s books, but then the TV show was very different from the books. And so ever since then, I've been very kind of like careful about it, but <laughs> it says, so it begins the nevers, a new historical fantasy streaming on HBO max, April 11th. It actually begins with a wordless opening scene, which people wander about an old timey frock or, uh, frocks uh, for several minutes, but hang in there. The fun soon starts as the Victorian heroine seeks out a child who may be cursed by the devil. Oh. <laughs> it leads to an aerobatic fight scene packed with luminescent hand grenades and weaponized parasols, setting the tone for the adventure of full kick-ass women taking on sinister baddies. Okay, that's weird. 
was funny. And you know, there it goes into its own like eight paragraph thing afterwards, but it it looks fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to give it a chance. I have XBO Max, so I will watch the whole thing because it's superheroes. I'm big into superheroes. It's supposed to be steampunk. I'm big into steampunk. You know, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> cool. yeah. I'll steal it someday. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sail the high seas if they, if you know what I mean. It's all right. They're yeah. just internet pirates. They just want a copy of all of our stuff. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so. You still get the original. It's it's a non fungible token oh, or yeah. something. <laughs> we'll share passwords or something. I'll give you my Netflix. You give me your HBO Max. We'll be okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> so we'll That's oh, how we read In the chat, she said uh, there were a lot of gadgety stuff in uh, Sherlock's lab when they go back to the his homestead. Yeah, actually, uh, in, up up in the the attic. Yeah, there in was. the attic. Yeah, at uh, hmm. Mycroft's house. Oh yeah, gigas and Uber Jews, but none of them are are used in the hey, scene or anything. Hey, hey, don't 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 underestimate Uber Jew. So the one <laughs> thing I liked about the um, the Iron Man version of Sherlock Holmes was that uh, the Robert Downey Jr. version was that <laughs> the main. Oh. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, it's, it's Iron Sherlock or. Downy, Downy Holmes. I don't know how you want to put that. But uh, <laughs> the way I liked how they did this, there's a couple of scenes where they're roughing up and they find like the first little taser and it's like the little thing gets like spin up and it charges mm -hmm. the thing and you zap the guy. That was technology back then. That was yep. actually a, um, it, it was like a novel de device you bring out at parties to shock your friends for fun. And that was a very big Victorian like, thing. Like, like the hand buzzer we have? <laughs> yeah, like that, that, that's oh. actually uh, most likely the thing that you know came what? out. It's more like the... Uh, you have the bug zapper that looks like a tennis racket. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so you okay. Take the tennis racket off, and you just have two wires, and you touch somebody with them. Oh yeah, or you or the, the the flash from the old disposable cameras that was always fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really, I wish I could monologue about making an omelet while I'm whooping somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, skills scrambled. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's skills we need to all learn. We need to come up with a good monologue. That's one reason I like watching uh, Raymond Reddington. He always has a good story that takes like 15 minutes, but by the time he's done with it, you're just enthralled. And then he has to end the story to do like whatever the show wants him to do. And you're just like, no, but I want to know what happened when you were moving Lithuanian gold on this airport. Or or he ends the story by shooting the person he was talking to. Or... <laughs> I mean, yeah. Or I digress. Click. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that was that's always fun. I don't know how to write <laughs> endings. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that's all. That's oh. how I felt like they get the the Avengers when they're like talking about like between the two main characters. This is like Budapest. I'm like, yeah, we're never gonna get to see what Budapest was like because they've built it up too high now. Yeah, because <laughs> it won't be a, it won't be anything what we want it to be after that. So, so, like Budapest. so was the was was that your homework, Jack? Or the the Nevers? Um, yeah, at the moment, yeah. Also, okay. because we have this guy on right next to me here. Oh, sure. Oh, that guy. I forgot about him. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Fast. Howdy. This may oh, look yeah. to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. He is, he is hold, he, uh, Jack is holding up a t-shirt with a design on it of a pumpkin head creature. Evil pumpkin. Or Jack. Yeah, Jack, I, Jack yeah. I presume was this was designed by the Necrofessor. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. it is. It was a Halloween design. Awesome. What? Yeah, I was. Uh, for those who are listening, it was the greatest shirt uh, that was ever shown uh, on film ever. Um, <laughs> just in case you're listening, it was. And no, it, it's, true. it's true. It's true. Glorious. We shall never again. I have life. anyone who wants one of those. We can talk because if I can get twenty people, I'll, I'll print off another round of those. And then I got some royalties. For this guy it was here. like looking yeah. at the face of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those the, the power of the imagination is a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, there's another one. Okay, yeah, this please. one I can't. It's blue. The, okay, I'm, I'm starting to get into focus in my. You know, I got new glasses and all, but it's still kind of. It's like a it's Mardi Gras person, almost. Yeah, it's, it's a lady a, with a face. The steampunk girl with like a tiny octopus top hat. I used to hate tiny top hats, but now I've come around full circle. I uh, <laughs> I appreciate tiny top hats now. I like them. I think they're cool. Big appreciation these days for tiny top hats. Yeah. So these are, the these, are, these are pieces of art we've had from him. 
Yes, that we it was a it's a it's a thrill and a pleasure every single time Steam Chest comes a knocking. Ah. Oh well, well, Rita every... loves the steampunk girl, and Ooh, Ryan yeah. says nice plague mask. All right, <laughs> Thank you. it hasn't been brought up, which is a shame. But the Necrofessor has a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Just oh, search yeah. for the Necrofessor, and he's fantastic. He is, uh, he's a musician. He's clearly an artist, an animator, a poet. There's all kinds of stuff on his on his channel. Yes, that's Black Necrofessor Coke. spelled N E C R O F E S S O R. <laughs> Necro Fesser. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a ne it's like a mixture between uh, necrophilia and professor. I mean necromancer and professor. <laughs> Just an excuse. I knew it. <laughs> it's actually a. Uh, it was. I used to teach art classes. And it's kind of a play on words. Uh, one day, one of the art people was like, hey, Necrofessor, what are we learning today? And I'm like, ooh, that's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing that. Thank real, you. It's real good. Yeah. It's real good. So, writing that down. I mean, nicknames, sometimes you have to earn your nickname. And I have always been waiting for, like, a cool one to just come around. So anybody that says anything in passing, I'm like, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. You said it. It counts. <laughs> Going to make it well, mine now. The Necrofessor definitely, definitely fits you. And it's a good one. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for the, the shout out. Yeah, I do all of my music. Um, I do all the animation crap on my on my channel myself. I do art tutorials. I talk about plagues throughout time. I mash these two concepts together into living your best plague life. Hence the the whole get up. And um, yeah, I've I've been fascinated about plagues and plague doctors, virology and epidemiology for freaking years. I have not shut up about it. I'm sure Jack can attest to this. And um, once the pandemic hit, I wasn't all like, "Yay, now's my time!" Woo! I was actually like, "Oh God, <laughs> here we go." My happen. favorite picture of you ever still is the one where you're wandering around like downtown with the big sign. Wash yeah, your damn hands. Wash your damn hands. Wash your damn I hands. share that picture everywhere I can. Yeah, yeah I've seen that picture. It's a, it's a good one. <laughs> Wash I, your damn hands. I, and, you know, people, I um, the interactions was definitely uh, something to behold. I you were I was caught with weird vitriol. People would drive down the street. And they'd be like, fuck you. And I'm like, yeah, I... <laughs> I, I just told you to wash your hands. More than being told to wash their hands. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm, I refuse to wash my hands because this jack off told me to. Uh, you're you're, inf you're infringing on the rights to not wash their hands. I <laughs> I don't get stick the stick the soap so. up your face. Obviously, you need it better in your mouth than you need on your hands. <laughs> I uh, I learned to take it in stride. Let me just put it that way. It was a Snorts it was a dumb. learning experience for humanity in general. And guess what? I mean, America's got to be number one at everything right so we had to we had to show them who's boss and infection rates right we gotta you gotta we gotta show we gotta take the we gotta secure the bag boys you know what i mean um yay, boy, yay we, us no. yeah i wish i had like a little little like corona flag that i could just wave <laughs> yeah go, go sticky prick fingers uh, yay <laughs> and that way i voted for humanity did i vote did i back the wrong horse i don't know <laughs> Oh man! Don't blame me. I voted for giant asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> giant asteroid, 2021. I was rooting. I was rooting for the. I was. I was rooting for the super volcano to blow. <laughs> that's under Big Ben. I'm rooting for Dragon Kronos. <laughs> I was waiting for some purple dude to come up with a giant golden thing and just go click. <laughs> you know that that plan is seeming more and more reasonable all the time. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> It yeah, was, Thanos had a it point. Was yeah. outlandish two years ago. Yeah. Thanos had oh, a point. Titan. Anyway. The, the, the fairly put off Titan. <laughs> Titan. Genius uh, not, Titan. Not such a bad idea, guy. <laughs> uh, you guys are talking about like cool stuff that's going to happen. What's really probably going to happen is there's going to be like some global sanction mandate where everybody has to open mouth cough into each other's mouth every Tuesday or something and be like, it's open mouth cough day, but wear your protective leotard and place your bets. And, you know, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, at this point, I wouldn't, I, I ain't surprised. Uh, I, I do not, I do not look forward to open mouth cough day. It's only weird if you make it weird. <laughs> brush your teeth. I'm making it weird. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be weird. Last thing I need is morning breath with your cough. Oh, what, you're too cool for open mouth cough day? Oh, oh no, I just want Listerine flavored ones. Thank you. Oh, oh. You and your round halo. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh sir. <laughs> I'm a saint of open mouth coughing. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'll call you that. that I performed a miracle. This guy died. Because <laughs> <laughs> I coughed in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, weird way to get to sainthood but yeah weird flex I'll see you on the other side <laughs> oh man this is yeah. wow Oof, look at man it's already been an hour guys that time <laughs> how is that even possible <laughs> it's been great oh. we gotta go <laughs> yeah <laughs> I wanted to do my homework but we're out of time oh, okay. oh well, can you give us the abridged version I would like yeah. to hear it uh, I found a new comic it came out oh, last wow. Wednesday because I, I I'm the I'm the comic book guy, obviously, or oh, maybe not obviously, but let me share the screen real quick here. Share, share screen, pop on that. Share. I found Midnight Western Theater number one Ooh. by Scout Comics. <clears throat> it's available at your local comic shops, probably, or through this website here. Preview. Oh, anyway. For those of you watching later or listening later, welcome to the Midnight Western Theater. Our feature presentation is a tale of a town under siege. The notorious Red Tom and his dastardly posse have laid claim to the once prosperous Vista of Liberty Springs. But for how long? Will these outlaws be able to, save, to savor their sinful victory as two black-clad strangers suddenly arrive? And the black-clad strangers are a picture of uh, what looks like a vampire holding an umbrella and a lady with a gun. <laughs> um, Is he a vampire because he has that ruffly shirt? Well, I, I well if you look closely, he has, he has vampire teeth and ears <laughs> in the picture. <laughs> he it off of Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, he got it from Seinfeld. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that that was, you know, what he was wearing when he died, probably. Um, yeah, the, the, the comic is, is short and sweet. It's a... Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. Do, 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 do. Stop sharing. Okay. Yeah, this start, it starts off. These 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 outlaws, they were bad. They killed everybody in the town, literally, um, <laughs> including the children. And then these guys come into the bar. They order a drink. The, of course, the outlaws are like, hey, who do you think you are? They're like, well, we don't care who you are, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they, and you know, they kill them. They, they kill all the outlaws. And then they, they ride out. The, the weird thing about the lady is she rides basically a skeleton horse. The, necrom the necro professor should like that. It's just a horse that's completely oh, nice. skeleton. <laughs> so nice. I never show it doesn't it doesn't say who she, it doesn't say what she is or who she is exactly exactly Great but we know man. for sure we know for sure he's a vampire we don't she does not act like a vampire she just rides a skeleton horse don't know why oh. hopefully we'll find out later as she's a the comic goes on and every single woman has the devil inside <laughs> see that's them instead of riding off into the sunset they're riding off into the the, the moon <laughs> I guess <laughs> at night. <laughs> I a song it's about getting it. stranger and stranger enough that I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, as for steampunk, maybe not exactly steampunk, but it's definitely Weird West, and I always call Weird West in the steampunk family for me, um, mostly because we're in Texas, and Texas is very, you know, I like the West, Texas, you know, out, cowboys and such. Out here. Yes. Um, and but I think it definitely fell into the right category, unlike that other one that actually said steam. On the cover that I will never talk about again. <laughs> oh, I'm mad about that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But it was a good one. I liked it. Once again, from Scout Comics, number one, uh, Midnight Western Theater. And by Scout Comics, you can find it at your local comic shops. It just came out last week. And awesome. um, so it should still be available. There you go. That was my homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got vampires. <laughs> Yeah, vampires and steampunk and Old West all kind of smushed together. I like all that. It makes me think about, like, if uh, if I had wings growing out of my back, I was one of those elevated vampires. How would I make, like, a corset to fit around that kind of stuff? Or how would I build, like, harnesses or a vest if I was going to have to, you know, pop that crap out in the middle of a saloon and poke somebody's eye out and slide across the bar, you know? Yeah, these, yeah. these are the things everybody asks about. These, these are the <laughs> questions that must be answered to become saints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you, can, yeah, if you corset, <laughs> so your wings can work properly. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah that go. would be a miracle. Yes. Fashion, fashion saint. <laughs> uh, well, I think anyway. we learned a lot. Uh, I mean, we learned about square halos. We learned about 
the concept is I love I love the fact that steampunk stuff is still popping in the main media. It, mm -hmm. It's never fully gone away, and yet it's never fully gone mainstream and gotten completely diluted down. There's yeah, been a couple of attempts, you know, like yep, Mortal yep. Engines. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, it's and that was the thing. If I got to bring up Mortal Engines, I just got to say it's it's like one of those movies where it's got all the perfect elements inside of it, but for some reason, it's just yeah. Eh, eh. I we, like we it. Just watched Mortal Engines like last week, finally, and I didn't think it was so bad. Yeah, um, it's like as long as they stuck with the book, it was fantastic. I thought when it started to diverge from the book, uh, it fell on its face. Oh yeah, it wasn't her, her face was like jacked up in the book, wasn't it? It was like she had yeah. this like huge like vertical yeah, she been like, much more diagonal scar. Yeah, they had to make her well, pretty for Hollywood. Well, yeah, she's yeah, she's Hollywood pretty or Hollywood ugly is what she was. <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> scarring, yeah, yeah. Because she had a romantic. scar. I mean, she had a little scar somewhere, if I remember. But yeah, she got the Kylo Ren treatment. R Kylo Ren got that little racetrack mark whenever he got hit with the fucking lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, sorry for dropping the f bomb. I, I, I'm allowed at least two and a half on these shows, please. <laughs> okay, so, no worries, no worries. Thirteen at this moment, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, already. Can, yeah, we got one. So, okay, well, wow, an hour has passed already. Thank you very much, Necrofessor, for joining us. It was yes, fun. Thank you so much. Um, it's and um, uh, once again, you know, I mean, you're, if you have, if you ever have anything else you need to plug or want to talk about, feel free to contact us. We'll have you on any other time, anytime. Yeah. Oh, anytime. Um, thank you. I'd love to um, do it again sometime. Yeah. Good. So once again, if anybody, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you everybody for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, you can find us on Facebook, you know, Texas Steampunk Connection, Facebook, um, any uh, criticisms or, you know, anything, insults, whatever, find me somewhere on Twitter. I don't know. It's on there. It's out there. <laughs> Send them to me. I will answer them. <laughs> okay. Jack will answer them. He can be found on Facebook on, and Steam Chest um, as well. Uh, so other than that, thank you all. Every once again, thank you everybody. Thank you, Thax. Thank you, Jack. Once again, thank you, Necrofessor. Um, until next time, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges. <laughs>